Invade Russia at dinner. Pick Waterloo for battle on a whim. It's the details, the small stuff. It's easy to gamble a million lives. What's hard is to see how that can hurt one single person. And if you can't keep that straight, hell, you'll lose your humanity. Won't you? Couldn't say, sir. If they do not offer the sacrifice of blood now, we will all pay dearly with added gallons later. Ike, Countdown to D-Day, will return on a &E. As you were. Morning, Beetle. Same to you. Why don't you quit smoking? I'm trying. Ready for the big day? It's a big moment. Anything good in the paper? No, not really. Stateside, midday, three days old. Walter, you're my chief of staff, not my HQ sensor. While Ike's a good administrator and a good organizer, he lacks the military flair of a Montgomery or the audacity of a Patton. Yet, for better or worse, he's the man they call Supreme Commander. You know, Ike, a little public relations wouldn't do any harm. Oh, wouldn't you know it? We're surrounded by some of the biggest swelled heads in history. My job is keeping them pulling together in the same direction. I can't do that if I'm competing with them for newspaper ink. This is your plan. You developed it. You fought Churchill for it. All the politicians, even FDR. Now, well, this is your show. The world ought to know it. Maybe. One day. But not this day. This day, we have other fish to fry, General. Now, may I have some coffee? Well, old man, bad habit in my opinion. Never been permitted in my HQ. Oh, all right, Monty. If it's so damned important to you, I did agree to use your ground for this. Churchill makes the final decision on what they buy. Only him. But don't oversell. He can smell bullpucky a mile away. Are acquainted with General Eisenhower, an American cousin? Yes. Good to see you again. Prime Minister tells us we may have great confidence in this undertaking. Oh, I never disagree with Mr. Churchill, Your Majesty. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. How delighted we are to see you again, General. We look forward to our private luncheon next week. As do I, ma'am. I thank you. General, if you please. Majesties, Mr. Prime Minister, honored guests, dignitaries, I'm Dwight Eisenhower, 
Commander-in-Chief, Supreme Headquarters, Allied Expeditionary Force, European Theater of Operation. Just getting the title straight is tiring enough. <laughs> so, I will leave much of today's business to my trusted and gifted colleagues, brothers in arms. We are from different traditions, different services, but we are united in this crusade. We shall liberate Europe, we shall restore freedom, we shall make the world safe for democracy. There is no other cause so urgent as to bring us so far from our homes. This is our purpose. This is Operation Overlord. Explaining how we will succeed is best done by my Chiefs of Staff, starting, of course, with General Montgomery, Commander, 21st Army Group, and responsible for all our land forces. General, if you will. Your Majesties. Of the enemy's 60 divisions in France, 10 are armored, commanded by Erwin Rommel. As you know, I faced him in the desert and bested him. But make no mistake, Rommel is an energetic Clever. commander. Clever. Putting Monty front and center. So he can bring his tanks southward. But we shall make a strike forward here. I hope to make Falaise 32 miles inland within 40 hours. Our troopers will total over 30,000 men. The largest drop in history. Casualties will be high. But the size of the force should draw at least two enemy divisions from the beaches, just as our men are ready to disembark. To take the left flank, we need to land enough men to swamp Hitler's Atlantic Wall. Losses amongst the British and Canadian troops will be heavy during the assault wave, but easing off as they move past the pillboxes. While Fighter Command provides cover for the beach assault and strafes the Atlantic Wall, General Spatz will smash the rail links leading south from La Manche, delaying any attempt by Rommel to reinforce his southern defences. Well, Your Majesties, gentlemen, there it is. We're anxious to hear your thoughts, additions, criticisms. The floor is open. I am impressed by the detail, the comprehensiveness of your planning, but the expected losses, sheer carnage. I also ache at that thought, Your Majesty. I remember my first trip to Europe as a young man. I felt blessed to be here, to see it, to touch the origins of my own country that I love so dearly. I hoped one day that all young Americans would have the same opportunity. Now hundreds of thousands will, along with Britons and Canadians and European allies fighting to return home. This kind of visit isn't what I had in mind. But if they do not offer the sacrifice of blood now, we will all pay dearly with added gallons later. So if some must die, it is in a worthy cause. to the very end. And if it fails, we both go down together. Issue the movement orders. Surely God himself must tremble at the task that lies before you. Ike, Countdown to D-Day will return on A&E.